Hello and welcome back to Cambridge. The topic for today is breach of contract and the remedy of damages. Let's begin with a general definition of breach. A breach occurs when one of the parties to a contract doesn't fulfil one or more of its obligations. Let's say I agree to deliver goods to you that will be of a certain quality. A good example might be that I'm a manufacturer of electrical goods and I promise to deliver 500 table lamps for use in your new hotel. But when those goods arrive, they're defective. The lamps don't work properly or worse still, they're downright dangerous. If something's described as defective, it means it was never perfect because it was badly manufactured. When something like this happens, the contract often gives the party in breach, in our example the manufacturer of the lamps, a certain number of days to remedy the breach. In other words, time to find a solution to any negative consequences of the breach. This is done by putting the injured party back in the position it would have been in if the breach hadn't occurred. In our example, the contract may state that the seller has seven days to provide new and well-manufactured lamps to the buyer. If this happens, the breach often has had no real consequence, except perhaps a little bit of inconvenience. But sometimes the party in breach either can't or won't provide a remedy, and the injured party has to rely on contract law for help. After all, that's one of the reasons for having a written contract. With a signed agreement as evidence, the injured party can easily prove what the other party promised and can ask the court for a particular remedy if the party in breach refuses to provide one. In common law systems, there are several remedies available to the injured party, but the thing that most injured parties have lost and want back is very straightforward. It's money. And that's why the most popular remedy sought by injured parties in breach of contract cases is the remedy of damages.